This is your Barbie List today, even Saturday, Wednesday, May 4th. Authorities at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital remain on high alert for COVID-19 after detecting an additional three new cases on Ward B7. In an update issue today, the hospital's executive chairman, Juliet Bino Sutherland, disclosed that Ward B7 has temporarily been closed to visitors to allow for routine quarantining, testing of other patients recuperating, and the sanitization of the patient care area. We are still on high alert at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Although we have been successful in bringing last week's outbreak under control and have reopened wards C5, C6 and B5, we had three cases reported on B7 yesterday. So we're therefore redoubling our efforts at mitigation and compliance with COVID protocols and we continue to ask our staff, our inpatients and outpatients and visitors for compliance with our guidelines. In its latest COVID-19 update, Barbados recorded 621 new cases of the viral illness, 278 males and 343 females from the 1,825 tests carried out on Tuesday by the Bestes Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases consisted of 150 persons under the age of 18 and 471 who were 18 years and older. There were 109 people in isolation facilities, while 3,247 were in home isolation. The death toll stands. The Central Bank of Barbados has unveiled modern, more attractive and durable banknotes with enhanced security features that make them harder to forge. New polymer banknotes, which will officially go into circulation in December, are expected to last about two and a half times longer than the existing paper notes. During an unveiling ceremony at the Frank Colomer Hall today, Gareth Evans, the country director for currency at De La Rue, the English-based company that is responsible for producing the banknotes, outlined some of the benefits. Polymer, on average, we're seeing around the world lasts two and a half times more than its cotton paper equivalents. That means the central banks need to replace the notes less often, um, they need to order less frequently, and makes it more cost effective over time. The second thing is with regards to security. So Polymer allows for the inclusion of big, bold, innovative security features that make the banknotes very difficult to replicate, but easy for the public to authenticate. The third benefit really is one for the visually impaired. So with the polymer substrate, you're able to include new features that make the banknotes far more accessible to this community. And then lastly, I'd like to say that the polymer banknotes are being proven to be more environmentally friendly. Um, as well as the increased durability and the reduction in logistics, the manufacturing process is actually more energy efficient than paper. And at the end of their life, the central bank can get the notes back in, they can securely destroy them, and then they can be recycled. Meanwhile, Central Bank Governor Clev Sahins, who described the new notes as attractive and modern, said, cash is still widely used, and this is unlikely to change for some time, even in an age of digital payments. In 2021, the value of currency in circulation was $960 million, the equivalent of almost 10% of GDP. Simply put, Cash continues to be widely used. For some people, it is their sole or at least their preferred way of paying, while for others, it is used in combination with other methods. We anticipate that over time, technology will displace some of the cash in circulation. Indeed, promoting the increased use of alternative forms of payment is a crucial element of our focus as an institution. We have challenged our financial institutions to join us on that journey by ensuring the availability of cost-effective modalities for payments in the modern age. Residents of Grisettes No. 1 St. Michael are relieved tonight after authorities moved in today to clean up a massive, unsightly pile of garbage accumulated by a man for more than two years. Police, the Minister of Health and Wellness, Ian gooden Edgel, were on hand to witness the work group and the Sanitation Service Authority clean up the area which residents said attracted rodents and other pests. What we have is a case where a gentleman over two years has been accumulating waste. The waste has um, been a nuisance to the residents. His cousin has made an appeal um, for assistance and therefore we thought that to come in here by ourselves would be risky. So we have the police here with us and we have the Ministry of Health. So far we have removed at least four trucks so far. And this is just um, 
under our operation, we anticipate that we are going to be here for a better part of today. So in all, I can tell you that we will get in the vicinity of, of, of 12 truckloads or even more, which is, is serious. Uh, so it's calling a lot, called a lot on our resources. But we are happy to assist, but more so we are hoping that the young man can cooperate with his family and go and get the help that is needed. Minister Ian Gooden Edgel assured authorities will seek to help the young man. He to express relief that the area has been restored. The authorities are going to obviously deal with the individual and see how best we can rectify the situation. But you would appreciate uh, that this is an untenable situation. And I know that the residents, even though I have had an opportunity to discuss the matter with them, um, obviously are grateful for uh, another uh, intervention and another act of relief. And therefore, I want to, to thank them and to assure them that we will continue um, to make sure that this constituency and this particular area remains free of debris. So uh, I think this will, this effort this morning will go a long way in terms of uh, keeping the area free of road and other debris, uh, which is absolutely critical to our environment. Meanwhile, Marlon Skinner, a relative of the man who has been hoarding the garbage, said his cousin desperately needs help. I appeal to the government or the ministry to help, to help my cousin, but he said, he can't hide the streets. Right now, the street is too tough for him. And what we're here now is like a different world for him. And he do need help. And that's all there now, he mind is buying garbage. And he need help. I like the ministry to help him. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, St. Lucia's Prime Minister Philip Pierre described opposition criticisms about his government's policies to tackle high oil prices as deceptive and misleading. Pierre maintains his administration continues to absorb the rising fuel costs. More from HDS News Force. The current administration has come under fire from the opposition United Workers' Party for what the UWP claims is the lack of a robust response to the mounting cost of fuel products. However, Pierre counters that his administration has done all within its power to cushion the blow of fuel prices. It's a simple fact that the supply of petrol, of, of gas, is limited. I've said before that we only, the revenue from gas is only 80 cents. With the new price of diesel, we make zero cents on diesel. Absolutely zero cents on diesel. And we are subsidizing cooking gas by over $20. I think $23 to be So, I mean, people can, be, can play the politics, but it, it's almost, I don't want to use the word, to be deliberately misleading people on something you, know, you cannot change. Further afield, the European Union has proposed a complete ban on Russian oil imports by the end of this year because of the war in Ukraine. Al Jazeera's Dominic Kean reports from Berlin, Germany. This is the Gazprom Neft installation in Khantimansiysk. From installations like these in Siberia and across Russia, crude oil, diesel and petrol are pumped to customers. Taken together, every day, nearly 8 million barrels of crude and refined products are exported. Two-thirds of them end up in Europe. But now, Russia's war against Ukraine has changed everything. Today, we are addressing our dependency on Russian oil. And let's be clear, it will not be easy. Because some member states are strongly dependent on Russian oil. But we simply have to do it. So today we will propose to ban all Russian oil from Europe. This will be
This will be a complete import ban on all Russian oil seaborne and pipeline, crude and refined. But in order for this to happen, it will need the support of all EU member states. Some are highly dependent on Russian oil and are strongly resistant to all-out embargoes. The Hungarians say what matters most to them is protecting their economy and people. War is going on, and as a consequence, prices are rising in the whole of Europe. There are signs of a serious crisis of energy, and the European economies are facing miseries, and we are not yet out of the age of epidemics. On April 3rd, people made a clear decision that they expect the leaders of the country to defend them and Hungary from these dangers. The new sanctions proposed in Strasbourg will also target several large Russian banks and other financial institutions. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.